Okay, everybody. Yeah. So, uh, uh, right now we're dealing with some confusion about the penetration yeah. lab. Uh, and it's uh, how we get from empirical formula and molecular weight to a molecular formula. Um, it was it was more just a confusion about what I, we're supposed to be looking at on yeah. the lab. I think you, yeah, you get it. Yeah, I okay. Think I get it, but, yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's prep X two and your data. And you just, Wait, so you were you said you were using just the periodic table? I was using prep activity one. I wasn't even thinking about prep activity two. No, prep activity two is the yeah. important one. Right. But you mentioned using a periodic table at some point. Right, because we found um, what the molecular. Uh, we, yeah, what we got the molar mass. mass. The right. molar mass of like H plus like the. Oh, so you did like an H X, and you yeah. were trying to and say I was trying to see what this X molecular was. weight. Is equal to 170. You have 179. 171.6. You have 171. Yes. So you're looking for something that was molecular weight 170, yeah, which is way outside of the yeah, range. Yeah. This is not the only style of acid. If we think about That's acetic right. acid, we have CH3COOH. That would be your X, right? Yeah. And then it turns out that this is acetic acid. We could actually have much larger organic compounds on here. So we we could make this thing like a, you know we can have a, what is it like a C six H seven O six H right yeah. and this could be your X right and it turns out X. that these oxygens actually are going to make another carboxylic acid group and that's what gives you like yo I think it actually is that is our no, ours is C6H. Yeah, see, yeah, but there's the H on the head. See? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, that's ours. There we go. So then you can compare this molecular weight to your molecular weight, calculate a percent error. And the way that you would get to this is again from prep activity 2. I also had one question of, like, about the, uh, the format of the final. Uh, can we get through some of the more content sure. questions first, if sure. you can hang out for a bit? Yeah. Great. Uh, what questions did we have about the carbonates lab, or are you all just answer trading? We're just, we're just comparing. Oh, comparing. Sorry, my mistake. Comparing. Well, I mean, I think we've I'm like sassing. I'm, ki I'm kidding. I'm kidding. figure out where I went wrong. Did you go wrong? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. first, because he's talking about the, the prep activity. Which prep activity? The one that we were just talking about, right? The combustion analysis. No. Okay. I can, I can help you out. Okay. okay. Uh, what other questions did we have? I had some confusion on how to do prep the prep activity for the carbonates lab. I like got to the end, and then my numbers were like weird, and so I just wasn't sure if I was doing it. Okay. Uh, uh, you're in the... Three to six. Three to six. So we talked about how to do this already. We did, so. but uh, I think that no. I'm just. I just wanted to be clear because my six to nine class we yeah, didn't talk about. Yeah. So I'm just. That means I can go through it a bit quicker. Cool. So when we're looking at this prep activity, what we're really dealing with is we're dealing with the fact that we've got essentially two reactions happening, and the confusion that a lot of people make is they try to combine the equations as if it's two things happening together when it's actually two separate things happening. Mm -hmm. So we've got. Nitric acid reacting with calcium carbonate. And we've got nitric acid reacting with sodium carbonate. These go to CO2, H2O, and calcium nitrate, CO2 plus H2O, and sodium nitrate. Balance it. Which that states of matter and all the oh, let's just do states of matter as well. Aqueous. After we add a water, that's aqueous, that's a gas, that's a liquid, that's aqueous. Alright, and so what's happening is both of these reactions are happening in the same physical space, right? They're both happening inside of the container. They're both happening, but Really, the acid is not reacting selectively with one or the other. It's reacting with both of them. So essentially what we can say is all of this acid reacting
in moles, because again, whenever we're looking at reactions, we should be looking at the mole scale, is going to be equal to the moles K2CO3 plus the moles Na2CO3, where we have to make sure we also include our mole ratio. It's going to be 2 moles acid for every 1 mole K2CO3. And it's going to be 2 moles acid for every 1 mole Na2CO3. We have to make sure we get that 2 to 1 ratio in there as well. Right, and at this point, we really have two unknowns. We have uh, potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate, both as unknowns. So we need some other equation that's going to allow us to get at that information. And uh, so we have to look back at the problem and say, what other information do we know? And the grams, uh, we know the grams, like before and after, essentially, of the uh, powder of the powder. Right, so we know the grams of the sample reacted. And even though we don't know how much of each thing is there, we know that that's going to be x grams. Uh, let me keep my order the same. It's going to be x grams K2CO3 plus y grams Na2CO3. And really that, on its first level, doesn't seem to help us that much. Right, because here we've got two unknowns, here we've got two unknowns, now we've got two equations and four unknowns. However, is there a relationship between grams and moles? Yeah, I can actually take this and replace it with x grams K2CO3 times one mole for 136 grams K2CO3. Right. So if I did this mathematics, that would give me moles of K2CO3. So then I have, I can essentially say this is not its own unknown. This is related to my other unknown. I can plug that in here. I'm going to simplify the writing a little bit. I'm going to lose some of my units. I'm just going to say equal to 2 times x divided by 136. Right? That's my x grams divided by my molar mass. And I can do the same thing with my sodium carbonate, and I can get plus y over, oh, I forgot my 2 to 1. Don't forget your mole ratios. 3 to 1 times y over 106. Now, I know how much acid reacted. This is actually something that's given in the information. If I remember correctly, it's like 0.115 moles. Uh, 0 0.0115, I think. 0115. Okay. And my grams of sample reacted? 0.744. Why are you so weak? Uh, now we have two equations, two unknowns. Can you solve that? Mm -hmm. I did that. And okay. I just, for some reason, based on where what you assigned as the, my x variable and the y variable, you get different answers, essentially. Like, basically, like when, the, when you actually like solve it in the eye, that might, I, it could have been, that should a, not I know, happening. it could have been an original, I think it was, yeah, I let think me take a look at your specific work and see what went wrong. Five, let me see here. Hmm. Well, 744 divided by 138 times 2 I think should be smaller than 0 0.0182. I could be doing the math wrong in my head. Oh, yeah, I guess that's, that's probably why. Yeah, I so I think, I, yeah, I, thought, so I think you're doing just an arithmetic error. Yeah, so you just have an arithmetic error. That's what I thought, I guess, looking at it like an hour ago, I just for some reason couldn't, couldn't, figure, couldn't figure out what exactly was wrong. What, what, what would that multiplication end up being? It ended up being, it was last year, you were right. It was 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, yeah, yeah. And that should Because the, the reason I spotted that was because I, I knew there had to be a simple, like, all of your setup looks correct. Yeah. All of, everything you did looks correct, and so I was like, it has to be a little math error. And I looked at this, this is like, uh, 138 would like, be like 0 0.001, like 0 0.009, something like 
like that, right? It'd be like 0.0, it'd be less than 0.01. And I was like, 0.01 times 0.7 should have two zeros, not one. It should be a lot smaller. So that, were you getting a negative answer? No, I just got an answer that just like did not seem reasonable. If that makes sense. Like the, okay. the proportions just seem like too small. Okay. okay. So we don't have to do the same. Uh, yeah. One other question. So that's that's how we set up that problem. Most of you do fine after we set up the equations. But I want to point out that it took a lot of chemistry to set up those equations. Right. We had to do a lot of thinking, a lot of like logical processing to get to those equations. We have to think about what we had in physical reality, what information we had from the experiment, and how we can put that together to make sense of what was going on. Uh, other questions? Do we have a quiz? Are we going to have old you, quiz? You'll get quiz six back today, and then we'll take quiz seven. Okay. Uh, I don't have them ready to hand back right yeah. now. So, so. Got it. <clears throat> other questions? Homework questions? You want to ask about the midterm? The, the final. The final. Yeah. Final, final, final. Yeah. yeah. What, what about it? So, uh, how, what, is the format going to be the same as? Similar. It's going to be, uh, we're just going to split yeah. it into two yeah. sections, a multiple choice section and a free response section. The uh, multiple choice section will have the hard and the easy ones mixed up together. Is it a common format? Um, it's a common format. So, we all of the instructors have agreed to use the same format, which breaks my heart a little bit because I like same, my format. Is it the same test as well, then? It is not the same. No, everybody does not have the same test. Okay, so it's not a common final. It common ish, right? So um, some of the questions are going to be formatted different than I would format them. I borrow some of the questions from other instructors. Instructors borrow questions from me, but you know, um, not all the tests are the same. And so it's like similar difficulty as the other ones. Yes. Yes. And, okay. So it's similar difficulty, similar kind of distribution of problems. Um, the, the distribution over what we're talking about is a bit more broad because it is a cumulative exam. And is there anything like you would say to focus on that we did maybe brushed over a little bit in the lecture, but there's like more questions on on the final? The way I think about it is to say, how much time do we spend on it in class? That's the proportion you should see on a well-made exam. And that should be true for all your classes. That's, this is my philosophy about exam writing. And that's definitely applied to the final. The amount of time we spent on it in class is should be representative of what percentage it is on the exam. Okay. So you know we spent we spent what two days doing Lewis structures and you know like uh, uh, resonance structures and isomers and functional groups. That's that's ten percent. So you should see that represent. Now, I will also probably have a bit higher percentage for the stuff since the second midterm, since it's my only chance to test you on it. Okay. And that's so a little bit more stoic stoichiometry. Love that. But should be, it's going to have a lot of things. It's going to be spread all over. Uh, Dr. Richard? Yeah. So in this equation, this x is the, um, the moles of. Um, so grams carbonate. of potassium carbonate. If you look at the equation below, so the X is the grams of potassium carbonate. The 136 is the grams per mole conversion factor. So X divided by 136 is moles of potassium so these carbonate. So these X's are the same. You just yes. kind of drop the G. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I got. Thank you. I, I, got, I got lazy with my units in that first equation just to make it obviously mathematics. Normally, I would leave all my units in there, but the units confuse people. And when I just have the uh, equation yeah. without the unit, people are like, oh, it's math. Could I ask you some questions about the homework? Sure. Are we ready to get on to homework questions? Let's look at some homework six questions. What questions do y'all have on homework six? Number 11? How'd it go? Um, I got to it pretty late last night. Um, it was it was fine, but like I'd like to still go up here. Yeah, make sure we're right. make sure it really works. I didn't I didn't finish. So I just got really stuck in the balance ring. Okay. Well, we'll look at it from there. <coughs> Number eleven. Any others that people want to look at? Uh, ten B. Also, does the final average tend to be higher than midterm two? Higher than midterm two, sure. Not as high as midterm one for your class, but that's you know, 
the the usual average SD on my finals exam is like a 73%, which is what okay. I expect. Yeah, cool. Of course, I also expect a 70% on the second midterm, so... What was it, we'll like see. a 59? No, it was a 61. 61, 62, depending on which section you were in. Okay. But they were like right next to each other. So, uh, we got 10B, 11. Any other, were there any ones that you like, are, would recommend looking at? I, I don't know. 23? Uh, 1 through 23, maybe? No, how many questions are on that? 21, yeah. I mean, all of them. That's why I gave them to you. Because, like, keep in mind, the homework is, like, the minimum. There's also the problems in the textbook. There's also the problems in the uh, supplemental workbook. There's also problems online. The homework should be your minimum problems done. But let's go ahead and look at these. Uh, what is problem 10? Uh, a 50 milliliter sample of 0.25 molar uh, ammonium carbonate is mixed with 60 milliliters of a 0.3 molar silver nitrate solution. Um, I just picked the following one. 60 milliliters of silver nitrate? Yeah, and there's a and it's 0 0.3 molar silver nitrate. Then it gives you the reaction. I assume it's NH4, CO3, aqueous. And the first plus A was to find the precipitate, which I figured out, but I didn't know how to just find the concentration of ions. So how did you find the concentration of ions? I guess what is that question asking me to do essentially? That says the aqueous, that's solid, right? So we've got two stoichiometric problems, right? So we can go ahead and say A is moles of solid. B is ions in solution. Is there a part C? No. Okay, so just A and B. So this is kind of getting at two pieces of information, right? Both of them are going to be related to the end step. So we have to go through the stoichiometry of this, the start reaction end. The start is going to be 0.05. I've just converted the, the milliliters to liters already, times 0.25 and uh, 0.06 times 0.3. That's going to give me my starting moles. Uh, 0 0.00125 moles of the ammonia carbonate. Yeah, ammonia point carbonate. Oh one, okay, I was going too far with my zeros. And then this would be. 0 0.018 divided by 4. Okay. Now, of course, I can't actually do my reaction step because I've done something silly, or not done something important, rather. Got to balance your chemical equation. I need a 2 there, and I need a 2 there. Right? And technically, we could look at this in terms of the total, uh, the net ionic equation and simplify our calculations a little bit. But since it's asking for all ions in solution, I'm going to go ahead and just do it as the total reaction. Uh, my reaction, I've got to figure out what's limiting. If I, uh, I need twice as much silver, that number is not twice as big. So my silver is actually limiting. I'm at minus 0.018. Minus 0 0.018, 0 plus 0 0.018, and 0 plus 0 0.018. Got to take into account my mole ratios everywhere. It's going to be a 1 to 2. We know that the bottom is going to be 2 everywhere because that's always the limiting reactant is on bottom. That's a 2, that's a 1, that's a 2. Then I can go ahead and total these up. That's 0. That's 0 0.009, and that's 0 0.018, right? And then I've got to do the math on this one. Could you go to the last step again? The, the reaction step or this end step? So the, the reaction step is where we, uh, after we identify our limiting reactant, we subtract the limiting reactant from each reactant, and we add it to each product taking into account the mole ratio. So essentially what we're saying is the silver nitrate is going to run out first. So how much this reaction can proceed really depends on how much silver nitrate there is. right? And once the silver nitrate runs out, there's going to be some ammonium carbonate left over, um, and then I'm going to get some products made from that as well.
Uh, so I'm going to have 0 0.01 through 5 minus 0 0.009 is going to be 0 0.0035. Please double check my mental math. So at this point, sorry about the scrunch on the edge of the board. You can still see it on the screen. Though. So at this point, we know how many moles of ammonium we have and how many moles of carbonate we have. Keep in mind that this is aqueous, so this should actually be um, NH4 plus plus CO3 2O. Oh, I have a mistake in my, I need a 2 there to balance that properly. Thanks. Doesn't change anything we've done before, but that means I'm going to have, it's going to change the answer to B because now I've got 2 NH4 plus. Um, this limiting reactant doesn't matter, it runs out. This thing is solid, it's just going to be a solid. This thing is going to fall apart though to 2 NH4 plus plus 2 NO3 minus. So essentially what I have to do, if I want to find ions in solution, I have to find out how many ammonium ions, and keep in mind, this is the thing that a lot of people have trouble with. Remember, the arrow is not different physical space, right? This is all happening in the same place. It's, it's reaction space. It's changing what's reacting. It's almost like what's happening in time. So at the end of the reaction, I've got reactants and products still left. I've got my excess reactants and whatever products I made. So when I consider ions in solution, I look at this and say, okay, what ions are in solution at the end of the reaction? Ammonia, carbonate, ammonium, nitrate. And that's ammonium. I keep saying ammonia instead of ammonium. Ammonium. The ion has the E on the end there. Right. Ammonium, carbonate, ammonium, nitrate. Right? So when I look at this, I can actually say, okay, so all I really want to know is NH4 plus in solution, CO3 2 minus in solution, and NO3 minus in solution. Uh, the CO3 is easy to do. There's only one source of it, and that's going to be 0 0.0035. The NO3 is also pretty easy. It's going to be 0 0.018, but keep in mind, uh, that's already taken the 2 to 1 ratio into account. Into account. Uh, so that's 2. So if I wanted to have a mole ratio here, that would be a 2 to 2 mole ratio. I've got 2 moles of ammonium nitrate, ammonium nitrate and that's going to make 2 moles of nitrate. Um, the ammonium is kind of the more difficult one. I've got the 0 0.0035. Here, that's going to be for every, I'm going to have two moles of ammonium for every one mole of ammonium nitrate, sorry, ammonium carbonate, and then I'm also going to have my 0 0.018 times a 2 to 2 uh, for this material made. Is that the answer? Yeah. Well, does it ask for concentration or moles? It asks for the concentration. So if you're going to do concentration, you're going to take those moles and divide by total volume of solution. Professor, this yeah. quiz is the one that can only help our grade, right? Is this the one? The lowest quiz grade is getting dropped. This is the seventh quiz, so this means your lowest quiz grade will get dropped. So th this one can only help us. Or must you drop the other four? Yeah, which would still help. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't realize you dropped it. I said if we got above six quizzes, we'd drop a quiz, and this will be the seventh quiz. We Sweet. made it. We did it. Yeah. Um, got me a little bit behind on grading on occasion, but we got it. Uh, so, um, yeah, that, can you do it from there? Yeah, well, so if it's just, yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure that there was one that, that yeah, I got it. Cool, great. So the, the part that really confuses people is what it means by ions in solution. And really, you have to consider how much do these things break up. And really, I can put this as like a 2 and H4 plus and Cool. Thank you. <coughs> you bet. Hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at number 11. If you can go ahead and give me a moment, and then we'll look at Number 11, if someone can read it out. 
Are we supposed to memorize all the what's it called acids now? Yeah, you should know everything on that common ions list. Yeah. And you should know all what is it? Uh, eight functional groups. That's seven. The ether and the ester and the okay. ether, ester, alcohol, carboxyl, acid, aldehyde, ketone, alkane, alkene. Aldehyde is just carboxylic acid without the oxygen, right? Yes. Okay. That's just how I remember it. I mean, it's carboxylic acid with one less oxygen. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the, the I figured that's what you meant. Yeah. They're the double bonded. It's a double bonded oxygen on the end of a carbon chain. Yeah. So it's good. Cane, kine, cane for like bonding. Like think of, think about it like this. It goes, in the, it goes in order of the alphabet. alphabet. Yeah. A E Y. Alphabet, yeah. yeah. Uh, but what's number eleven? That's acetic acid reacts with sodium carbonate to produce sodium acetate, carbon dioxide, and water. How many milliliters of a 0 0.054 acetic acid solution are required to completely react with 100 grams of sodium carbonate? That's 0 0.054 molarity? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we've got our acetic acid. I abbreviated it AA because I was having trouble writing as fast as you're reading, which is okay. But we've got 0 0.054 molarity acetic acid. We want to react with 100 grams sodium carbonate, and we want to know what volume. Should we just know what acetic acid is? Yeah. That's on. Is that not on your list? No. The CH3. Yeah. Oh no, it's right here. Never mind. Okay. okay. I'm just, no, it's just written differently. Sorry. Uh, C2H4O2. Yeah. I like writing it, so that's the you know molecular formula. I like writing the suggestive molecular formula, so you've got that functional group suggested in the formula. So we're going to go ahead and react this with Na2CO3 uh, solid aqueous. That's going to go to CO2 gas plus H2O liquid plus sodium acetate. Yeah. I'm going to switch to my other green pen. Okay. So, uh, what we know is we've got 100 grams here. We've got 0 0.054 times some unknown volume there. Right? That's our starch reaction. And now, of course, the first thing I have to do is balance it. Uh, the balancing is two, two, and we're done. Now the balancing for this one, I showed I showed some other students a trick for balancing this one yesterday. Um, for a lot of our acids, you can do this simplification where you can recognize that anything that's covalent is not going to break apart. So you can actually balance this as HAC, where AC is equal to that. That's your acetate anion. Uh, plus Na2CO3 goes to CO2 plus H2O plus NaAc. And again, that Ac is the acetate anion. And that makes the balancing a lot easier. And we can do that with a lot of functional groups when we realize that the functional group, the, the common polyatomic covalent compound, um, those ions, are not going to break apart. They just continued through. So I can abbreviate it, and it makes it easier to keep track of that way. Because uh, in this case, you can kind of see that I need two H's to go here to make the CO2. So there's that two, there's that two. It makes it much easier to keep track of all of the carbons, all of the oxygens, and everything. Is it OK if we would write it as C2, uh, C2H3O2 uh, O2 and then H? Yeah, that's also fun. OK. <laughs> There's a lot of different ways we represent uh, acetic acid. As uh, long as the ratios are correct. It's... As long as the ratios are correct, as long as you're, you know, so the way you're writing it is the molecular formula accentuating the acidic proton. The way I like to write it accentuates the entire functional group. And there's still some people who just write it as C2H4O2. And they're like, of course it's an acid. I but it's like, you, you can't tell with it written that way, right? So, but it's acetic acid, of course it's an acid, right? So it really just depends on how, what we're trying to communicate and how communicative, communicative we want to be. Uh, the molar mass of sodium carbonate is 
Do we all have it memorized? Yeah. Zero, five, Wait, we're supposed to have that memorized? Just from using it so much in the carbonates lab, right? It like I don't ha I don't remember it, and then when the carbonates comes around, I use it and then I use it and then I use it. Yeah, that's true. And then it just gets stuck in my head. I also do solve these problems like twenty five times in two weeks because of the number of questions I answer. So, um, also, feel free to take the chairs. We didn't want. Like I'm not going to be sitting again. Um, so. Uh, we know that's 100 grams divided by 106. That's going to be like 0.9 something. It's going to be just the one. Five, yeah. So this is 0.945. This is going to be 0.054V. That's going to be our moles at the start, right? I don't think this question asks about products at all, so I can, you know, I've got my three products I'm not going to worry about. In my reaction step, now this is the part that we have to read a little bit more carefully to understand. The question asks, how much acetic acid would be necessary? That implies that we're doing something like a titration, right? We want to set this up so both these things run out <coughs> at the same time. We want both of them to be limiting. That means at the end here, I want zero acetic acid left over, and I want zero carbonate left over. This also means that I can use either thing as my limiting reactant. Um, in, in this situation, I would say both of these are limiting. I can subtract either one. I should get the same answer. Uh, I'm going to subtract the one with the variable, just because I feel like that's a little bit easier. Because I think I'm going to like the equation I get a little bit more, but it should be the same. So we're going to have minus 0.054V. I'm going to have minus 0.054V times a 1 to 2 ratio. And right here I can see 0.054V minus 0.054V is, of course, 0. And this one gets me the equation I need to solve for 0.945 minus 0.054V divided by 2 is equal to 0. And what this allows me to do is I can move the, I can add that to both sides, and I'm going to get 0.945 is equal to 0.054V divided by 2. And what this tells me is uh, my moles of carbonate has to be equal to my moles of acid with the mole ratio. Then I go ahead and I'm just doing algebra at that point to solve for V. So I multiply by 2, divide by 0.054. I can't do that. You can multiply then. that by like a thousand then to also get that in milliliters? Yes, if it wanted the answer in milliliters. Cool. That's why, okay. I got, it ends up being uh, 35. 35 milliliters? I think, yeah. No, 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 35. Uh, that V is equal to 35 if you just solve that. V is just equal to 35? Okay. Like 35 liters? I mean, if you do that math, that's really Let's see if that makes sense. It, that's, it's a huge... 100 grams is about one mole. Okay. Right, for, for sodium carbonate. Okay. Because the, the molar mass is 106, 100 grams, that's about one mole of stuff. I'm, I need twice as much, so I'm going to need two moles of acetic acid going at 0 0.054 moles per liter. So how many times do I have to use 0, .0 how many 0 .05s do I need to add up to 2? About 35. So yeah, that makes sense. I got that enough. It just seems like huge. So I wasn't sure yeah, so this, this is a huge number. This would be a poorly designed experiment. And I had some of you do this during the lab. Not exactly this bad, but some of you were just like, oh, I'm going to use 10 grams. It would have used about 3 liters of solution which means it would have used about 20 burettes, or it would have used 15 burettes full. This is super accurate, though. All that precision. Uh, <laughs> refilling burettes usually messes people up. You, you really want to keep it, and actually I'm off, because if it was 3 liters, you're only getting 50 mils per burette, so I'm at 150 burettes full. Yeah, so I was off by a zero there. Or a really big burette. Also becomes impractical. Or you can just use 0.1 grams. And then you're using 15 milliliters. 
Wait, I'm confused what the V is for. The V's are unknown. That was in the in the promos asking what volume of acetic acid would be needed to react completely. So the V's are unknown variable. We don't know what the volume is. Which question is this? Question eleven. So we plugged in V as our unknown volume that we're solving for. And so I said, molarity times volume gives me moles. And then I can subtract my moles, and then I can solve for the volume. Oh, because the 0.05 bar is the molarity. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got, a, I got a little lazy with my units. I thought that was the moles. So I was like, how does the data oh, yeah. change it? But OK, I get it. Yeah. Let, me, let me put in my units to be clear. 0 0.054 moles per liter. Better? It's important to not be too lazy with your units. Uh, other questions? Problem 20, are, are we good on this one? Yeah. Let's take a look at problem 23. If you kind of come up with any others you want to look at, that's fine as well. Someone willing to read problem 23 to me? The mixture of CO3. And CaO weighing 0.693 grams is needed to decompose CaCO3 into CaO and <coughs> CO2 after all the CaCO3 is de decomposed the sample weighs 0 0.508 grams what was the original mass percent of the CaCO3 what's it decomposed into? Point five oh no, 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 the, the chemicals. Calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Calcium carbonate decomposes <coughs> into calcium yeah. oxide. So just this thing converts into CaO plus CO2. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So here's the way that we think about this, right? There's really only one chemical reaction going on. Right? When we think about this, the only chemical reaction going on is calcium carbonates decomposing. But we're starting essentially with some already decomposed calcium carbonate in the form of calcium oxide. So when I look at this chemical reaction, I'm going to have CaCO3 uh, decomposes if I heat it to CO2 plus CaO. Now, at my start, I'm going to have x grams of this. And I'm going to have some y grams of this. When I go through my reaction step, I know the um, molar mass of calcium carbonate. I tried my best. I hit it with a camera. I theoretically can determine. I don't know it off the top of my head. I can determine it yeah. through the periodic table. Being 100.09. 1 over 1. Oh, I'm just going to call it 101 moles per gram. And calcium oxide? So essentially, I'm, I'm running into a very similar problem to what we had in our. Uh, carbonates prep activity, except for we've mixed up where the variables are. Rather than having two reactants, I've got a reactant and a product present. So when I do my reaction, since I've only got one reactant, I know that this is going to be minus x over 101. And I've got this balanced, right? One, yeah. yeah, it's already balanced. So I'm going to have minus x over 101. I'm going to have 0 plus x over 101 plus x over 101, and even though it's a 1 to 1 ratio, I still want to include that mole ratio since it's actually changing my units. Uh, at the end of this, now, before I do this, because once I get to the, and this is why I don't give answer keys. When you see the answer, you'll go, oh, that's not hard. But the process of getting to the step where we have that figured out, that's the important mental work. And if I give answer keys, I steal that from you. And I don't want to steal that from you, so I never give answer keys. But notice how we've set things up here so far. So far, we've done the same logical steps that we've always done. There's just the, there's two extra things we've had to consider. 
the main thing we had to consider was what does that calcium oxide in the beginning of the sample really mean? And what that means is at the start, um, and then the other thing we had to figure out is what chemical reaction is really happening. Right? The chemical reaction that was really happening was just the decomposition of the calcium carbonate. And then that means the extra, the, that calcium oxide at the beginning meant we started with some react, we started with some product, product already present. It's not going to participate in the reaction, it's just already there. So when I set this up, of course, my calcium carbonate is going to be the limiting reactant. I don't really care about this, uh, the carbon dioxide made. But what I've got here is y over 56 plus x over 101 is equal to moles of calcium oxide. Now we have to go back to what we started with to try and get some extra information. So I've got two equations. And really, I've got two unknowns. Because after the reaction, the only solid present is the gas. At the end of the reaction, the only solid present, the only solid present after the decomposition is calcium oxide. So I can take this point 508 times 1 over 56, that equals my moles calcium oxide, right? So I can plug that in down here. Point five oh eight divided by fifty six. That's my moles of calcium oxide. Y over fifty six plus one oh one over uh, X over one oh one has to be equal to point five oh eight over fifty six. Still, I have two unknowns. What's gonna allow me to figure out that last bit? <coughs> Like the starting value? Yeah, right. I know X is my starting mass of calcium carbonate. Y is my starting mass of calcium oxide. I don't know how much of each I have, but I know both of them added together must be equal to my starting mass, 0.693. So I get X plus Y equals 0.693. Can you solve? <coughs> this is another... Two equations to a nose problem. Notice, even though it's a different conceptualization of what's going on, instead of having two reactants, we have reactant and product, mm -hmm. the mathematics come out the same. And the stoichiometric, more importantly, the stoichiometric process we go through is actually still the same. It's just identifying the reactions and identifying the starting conditions. Um, I don't know the solution, but I, we could solve it from here if someone's willing to pump through some calculations. I can't do that in my head. What's that? I mean, it's on the homework, so it'd be fair. There's, I mean, honestly, there are so many good problems on this homework. Someone asked me, like, which questions should we focus on? I'm like, there's so many good problems. I wish I could ask you all of them. It's not like I get that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know. There's a problem similar to this in the lab, I think, for one of the graphs that I was asked about. Yeah, this is essentially almost identical. This is very similar. I can't say anything about it. This is very similar to the carbonates prep activity. Wait, so for this one, the 0. 0.508 grams, was that the total? Ending mass. Yeah. And then since CO2 is a gas, we can assume it has no weight? Well, it, it's not going to be collected. Okay. CO2 definitely has a mass, but it's not going to be collected unless we do something special, which is what we're going to do today when we're talking about the gas laws. We're going to talk about how you take into account the gas. Because right now, we've just kind of let it float away. We've been doing it in the carbonates lab. We just let the gas float away. Um, and in the lab today, we're actually going to collect in the in the second lab we're doing today. After we finish the carbonates lab, we're going to do a lab where we actually collect the gas and see how much gas we have. Yeah. I have a question about 
two e. Um, sure. So on the homework. On the homework. Great. Conceptually, it's super easy. What's the empirical formula given the percent masses of these three things? Mm -hmm. But then, in that particular example, can I read you the numbers and then? We'll yeah. Should we go through this one? Let's go to me. Because when you, you get numbers, it's like close to three quarters, but then the other one's close to a third, and then you get confused about how to get the, the actual right empirical formula. Okay. Let's take a look. So we're looking at problem 2b. Yep. We've got the percent by mass. Correct. Go ahead, give those numbers to me. 29.71 carbon, 64.06 lead, and 6.23 hydrogen. What compound is that? Tetra. Tetrafolet. Tetrafolet. Tetraethylet. So like here, oh, we, interesting. Um, what an interesting problem. I'm glad I had that one there. So let's go ahead and do the same thing that we usually do. We're going to assume that we have 100 grams of samples. So that is percentages. If we had a 100 gram sample, I'll become grams. I can do the. Wait, sorry. So if you do this one, actually the numbers come out super um, clean. But it's it's A. Oh, A. OK. Um, so sorry. you convert to moles. Let's go ahead and do A. Then. Yeah. So that's ibuprofen, which is 75.69% carbon, 15.51% oxygen, and 8.8% hydrogen. Again, assuming a 100 gram sample, we can turn those percentages directly into grams. Right. I'm going to do 8.8 .8 is going to be 8.8 .8 moles of hydrogen. Um, that's multiplying by 1 over 1. This is going to multiply by 1 over 16. That's going to be about 0.9, right? Because 16 is almost 15.5. Calculators, hopefully, to make sure I'm doing my calculations right. Yes, yeah, so 0.969. 969 moles oxygen. And then we're going to multiply by 1 over 12. 70 is like... It gets you 6.3. There we go. I was like, it's just oh, more than 6, because that would be 6.3022. Zero, two, two. And that's zero, two. Two. Oh. significantly. Wait. So yeah, let's just leave it at 6.3. Yeah. So then we go ahead and we does divide by, to get our empirical, mm -hmm. we want the lowest ratio. So I'm going to divide everything by 0 0.969. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Divide by 0 0.969, that gives me 1. Divide by 0 0.969, that's going to give me something just a little bit bigger than 8. Uh, 9.08. Okay. And I'm going to divide by 0 0.969. And I'm going to get something just a bit bigger than 6.3. 6.50. I'm going to round this one to 9.0. So I've got 6.5. Did you forget to do the divide step? The divide step. Ah, yes, yeah. finding the lowest ratio. So if you forget to divide by the lowest ratio, right. you can actually still do the problem, but you end up not getting the empirical formula. You usually get something larger than the empirical formula and then have to divide out afterwards. So, see ya. I see. Okay. So what right. do you do from there? And it also becomes a much bigger headache. Right. Because most of the problems, at least uh, a lot of the problems, are set up to be done this way. So this is like the easiest yeah, path. Yeah, okay, so it would be uh, C13, then they, you multiply the whole thing by 2. Yeah. Get your empirical. Yeah. You get yeah. times 2, times 2, times 2, and we get 13, 2, 18. And that would be your empirical formula, not your molecular formula. So you could look at this and say if I had 6.3, 8.8, and 9.7, if you multiply it by 10, you get 63, 97, 88. Mm -hmm. But then you have to like find the lowest ratio of those. I see. Yes. Right? And so just you're going to end up dividing everything by 63, and then that's not going to come out even, and then you're going to have to multiply again. Um, and you essentially give yourself like three extra steps if you don't divide this first. Still doable, just right. a much bigger headache. Right. Yeah. 
Thank you. That makes total sense. Yeah, that's, cool. yeah. Yeah, that's definitely it's an important step. Can uh, we go over actually the pre lab one for the. Yeah, yeah, are there any other questions? Sorry. I did that one on the video already, so I might stop okay, the video fine. and upload it so people can watch it before class. Any other. Ah, it's mostly enough people. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Oh, did anybody watch? Yeah. Oh, some of you watching. Did they ask questions? They didn't ask questions, though. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.